And all of a sudden, um, uh, I don't know which ghost it is. Pinky, Blinky, Winky, pa- Pac Man. The Winky. blue Pac Man ghost is about to be eaten. The blue one. They're, oh, they're all blue when they're about to be eaten. So yeah, what, yeah. A, an, an about to be eaten one of unknown name comes in and tells the teacher he's coming. He's coming to get me. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, he ate the big pill. What am I gonna do? Right. And the teacher's just like, haha, leave. You're you're funny with your Pac-Man ghost. All right, get out of here. Yeah. And then Pac-Man comes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, it's Pac-Man. And then Pac-Man chases him around a bit and then chases him out of the room. And everyone there was, was very entertained. Man, I miss college, and I miss uh, hijinks like that. I miss that type of college hijinks. Nothing like that happens at work. There's no way I'd be sitting at work and someone dressed like Pac-Man would run through the conference. It's room. a pretty good Pac-Man costume, too. Nice and ah. solid, good shape. Better than some of the ones I saw at Otakon. Well, even some of those are good, though. I saw one really good one at Otakon because it was going up the escalator. It looked like it was eating people. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> this this is picture. a lot like that one, but it's not the round ones I don't like. Eh. The round ones are too... Uh... Anyway. Yep. Do, so do, it's do, do. anime day. Anime, and manga, manga and comics. Yeah. Arts, all that stuff. Web comics. All those sorts of things. Yep. Though we did watch uh, episode one and two of a newish anime. It's very new. Yeah, it's very good, too. Mushishi? Mushishi. It's about these little uh, things called mushi. Well, they're not all little. They're Well, some are big. At first, I thought they were all little. They look like little like protists or little bacteria. But, you around. know, the big ones were seen to be a bunch of little ones combined, but yeah. other times not. It's sort of an ambiguous spiritual thing. It's neat, because the show starts, and there's what looks like a main character, and this, like, peripheral char- character who comes in. And then through the episode, you realize at the end that the peripheral guy who came in is the main character, and the guy who thought was the main character is just this one episode throwaway side plot. Yep. But I like it seems like every episode is a, is a one-episode plot, which is yep. good, because the order doesn't matter so much. But I'm sure that over time that more about the Mushishi guy will, with one eye is revealed. With As was in episode two. And his Mushishi pin. And his, it was Mushi pin. Mushi pin. Because the, the creatures are Mushis. Yes, and he is a Mushishi because he chases Mushi. But it's not like Pokemon, which is, you know, it's, it's cool because it's like creatures, but not Pokemon. Though he has at least one of these Mushi that is his own personal... I'm sure uh, he has more and yeah. he uses their powers, but whatever. It's a good show and it's worth watching. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not an AA++ show, but... It's the best show this season so far. Yeah, if you like, uh, like Shadow Star, Narutaru. It's similar to that, but that had a little more fighting Pokemon leanings. Yeah, but it's I, like the same it's kind like p- Pokemon plus Mushishi equals. It is Shadow in the genre Star. of strange and cool, unexplained creatures in an episodic kind of deal. It's more in the genre of, you know, nice, happy little spiritual story kind of things. Yeah, it wasn't all happy, though. Luckily, there were some happy endings in the early parts. Well, okay, they're they're not perfectly happy endings, which yeah, is good though, because perfectly happy endings make for bad. Yep. Dreck. Like in the first episode, you see all these mushi, and you're like, "Oh, the mushi are cool and cute and whatever, and they're happy." Then the second one, there's the bad mushi. Yeah, it's like not all mushis are good or bad; they're just mushi. They're just yep. these creature things. I like the way they look; they're really funny looking. Some of them are cute and happy. I like the ones that are all like translucent protozoa thingies, and they fly around. And I'm very glad that unlike Cluster Edge, nobody got the gay on them. There was no, uh... No, no, uh, no <laughs> unexpected random gay. God, I still can't get over that scene in frickin' Cluster Edge. Yeah, we just, we don't want anyone listening to this to think that we're homophobes or anything. No, we're not. In fact, considering that we have a tradition in our group known as the Yaoi Couch... Yeah, but we can't take it when there's even an allusion to a Yaoi in something we're actually watching. <laughs> Mainly because we have a friend who, uh, we were over hanging out at her house one day, and we discovered her Yaoi dungeon... Oh, yeah. she. Ate. In fact, we were talking about making molds of penises randomly. Don't ask why we were talking about that. You yeah. really... Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> but all of a sudden... She had a relevant yaoi manga. Uh, I Sa- believe it was... Sephiroth yeah. making a mold of his penis and then impregnating himself with it. And uh, this one manga came out of a sea of manga under her bed. And it was cool and creepy at the same time. All of which were yaoi. Yeah, yeah. All right, Mushishi to Yaoi. <laughs> so how do we get from Yaoi to something else? Well, let's talk about something that we really don't mind Yaoi mixing with. Didn't you watch... Uh, uh, Gankutsuo. It's not so Yaoi. No, it's not. Shamanic Princess. Yeah, you can talk about Shamanic Princess. We can get Yaoi on that all we want. Yeah, there's no Yaoi in it, though. 
No? It's old. It's real old. But it still looks kind of like... Eh. It was animated really well for when it was made, and it's really was pretty. Wasn't it made in the 90s? Yeah, like, early 90s. Early 90s? Like early, mid-90s. This is old uh, Are stuff. you sure to check the year on it? It looks like a 96 or a 97 to me. Yeah, early, mid-90s. It's pretty We'll old. have to go check the year. I saw it a long, long time ago. All right. And I watched it again, because I hadn't seen it in a while, and when I'd first seen it... It was a show that I had seen, one of my early mo- anime that I'd seen. So it was kind of, uh, I saw it through the eyes of someone who thinks all anime is perfect and awesome, and I loved it all. And I watched it again, and I still really like the show, but it's definitely not a anime. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, getting into anime, and like, anything was great. Now, yeah. not so much. Though I gotta say, if you like pretty shows, Shamanic Princess is definitely worth watching. It is definitely a... Pretty people standing on top of tall, spiry buildings, saying poetic things, and then fighting with each other with magical things. So, so it's X. Yeah, it's a lot like X. It's that style of show. Nineteen ninety-six. I'm the win. Ah, uh, mid nineties. Whatever. <laughs> if I would have said ninety-nine, you'd been like mid nineties. It's between ninety and two thousand. Nah. It's in the mid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ninety-six. I was a freshman in high school. That links up actually from when I saw it. All right. Well, I guess that's good. That you saw one as brand new then. I saw one that was fairly new. Eh? I saw a uh, crappy fan sub of it, in fact. Mm. And I got to say, the dub is the worst dub ever. Worse than the Utena dub? Worse than the Utena dub. That can't be. I should play some clips from it. I think oh it's just you God. haven't seen terrible dubs in a uh, while. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> just just for one example, there's this cute little ferrety thing na- named Japalo, and he has a funny, like, normal voice. And in the American dub... Instead of having, like, a funny little guy kind of voice, it has, like, the voice of an old carny. And everyone speaks in such a stilted way. An old carny? Like an, like a carny from a carnival, only who, she was old and she was a gypsy. She? Or he, I couldn't tell. So we did get the yaoi all over this. Ah, uh, yeah, because the ferret was getting it on with, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's if anything, even... it was probably more of a Yuri show, because all the main characters are girls, and they all seem to like each other a lot in a very non-Yuri way. Mm. This was before Yaoi and Yuri became mainstream, like they are now. Yeah, I don't think I'll be watching this show. Let's it's send it back show. to Netflix. Yeah. So, uh, I went to the comic book store today. And I see you picked up Rakuto. I got Rakuto. I see you picked up a Death Note. You know this Death Note. When I went there to get Death Note Volume One, the day it came out, yeah, there wasn't any. Le- there was a little manga rack because there's a big wall full of comic books and a little rack of m- new manga. Then they have a wall of the old manga, but they have a rack of new manga. Uh huh. There were no Death Notes on the rack of new manga when I went to get Volume One when it came out, and I asked, and they said, "Oh, I guess we're sold out." Today I went and I go to the rack, and Death Note Volume Two. Not on the rack. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, I don't want it to come here like next week again because I had to go the next week to get volume one. It was so, ah. Uh. Oh, no, I went to the other the branch of the store you to get volume one. You could just buy every Death Note a week off from when it comes out. Yeah, but it's still a pain. It's not like you haven't already read it all. Haven't read it all. The plane took off, and I don't have this next. You know who, you know what happens in the only part of the plot that I really care about. It doesn't matter. But anyway, um... So I asked the guy, I was like, all right, this guy was running around the store like a nut. I think they were short on employees, because one <laughs> guy I always see there wasn't there, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, got Death Note? So he looks on the rack. It's not on the rack. The rack actually was really empty. So he goes, and he's like, where's the overstock? I got the last one in the overstock. Awesome. Then he took the overstock, and he started filling up the manga shelf again. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and Death Note is awesome. Yeah. And I read it again, it's still awesome. If you haven't read Death Note, read it. Oh, my God. There are two volumes out now. Buy them all. Oh, my God. Because I must say, Ryuku is probably the best character in any manga ever, with the possible exception of Major Kusanagi herself. Uh, he's cool. I think he's the coolest. He, he's the only person I've ever seen in any manga who got both upside downy and inside outy at the same time. For not eating apples? Something like oh, that. Oh, oh, oh my god. The, when you read it again, there's great stuff in here. Like, when he makes the prisoners who commit suicide write notes before they die. Yeah. And he reads down the left-hand columns. L looks at the notes and he reads down the left-hand columns, like the first letters and the first words of each sentence. Yeah. And it says, like, L, do you know? It said that in Japanese, too. Yeah, and the next one says... Uh, gods of death, 
And the yeah. last 